are back on the Model A. I am feeling like I may need to just bust a cap out here, okay? Let me put up that six shooter before somebody gets hurt. Uh, that's because we are going to the Lone Star Roundup, April 19th and 20th in Austin, Texas. Pre-63 car show. We will be there. Uh, the Model A will be there. I don't know how finished it'll be, but that's why I'm excited and that's why I'm out here banging out as much as I can on this thing to have it as far as long as I can. And it just had me in the old Western spirit. Every time I think about Texas, I think about shooting stuff in big cowboy hats and eating red raw meat because I'm a man. Damned old parasites don't scare me none. All right, let me show you what we got done last week, which is kind of, sort of, wrapping up our sheet metal work. I'll show you why I say kind of, sort of here in a second. Uh, now at this meet and greet we're gonna do in Austin, Texas. Well, I'm gonna be there. Slick Fitty's gonna be there. Sir Mordecus is gonna be there. Sweet Patina's gonna be there. The Bowling Brothers who have sponsored this Model A build and have uh, driven a large part of me wanting to build a nicer car is gonna be there. Uh, so hopefully y'all can check out some of their spots and some of their stuff too, I mean. Except old grump, grumpy Mortsky, y'all can just walk right past him. Let there be light! Now this week, with the sheet metal pretty well wrapped up, we're gonna focus on permanently installing our very small dome light here. Just playing. Uh, so last week, we kind of wrapped this up. Still waiting on nut certs for that. And all that kind of needs full welded, which is what I'm trying to work towards, which is getting ready to pull the body off so we can full weld that. And then we can look at seam sealing body work and primer and painting, doing all the stuff it takes to make this baby just look cherry and mint again. Now, we got a little problem here, Shane. Uh, gas, ow! <laughs> Do not smack your hand on that. You will feel it. Gas pedal steering, rear seat mount, uh, battery mount, Pull the body, full weld it, seam seal primer, all that kind of goodies. All that kind of good stuff is what I wrote down for what we can try to accomplish in the next day or two. So we are gonna start in here with the gas pedal and steering area. Try to see ooh, what it's gonna take to make all that happy. Now this little cereal spoon right here, you just scoop it. This just came out of slick shop. Probably shouldn't have just mouth that like a teething baby. Yum, 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 yum. All right, sorry. I'm a little wound up this morning. Uh, we are, no slick, hook me up with this, and we are we need to clear this, because if you mount it over there and then you try to give her gas, you're gonna limit that. We don't wanna limit the gas application. So we need it to land somewhere in there-ish, probably about like so. That is looking like it would then pass through kind of up there on our curve, which I'm not too concerned about necessarily where it comes through. I'm thinking that would have us coming through right up in this general area, which we could then manipulate a rod to step down and over and go towards carburetors or whatever. Carburetors, carburetor, I don't know what carb setup we're gonna run quite yet. I think I'd kind of like that right in there. Mark us a hole. I don't want a lot of holes in our firewall, so we'll just drill that one, and that's so I can Clico this and test it. And once we figure out where we really want it, I've got a plan to keep uh, holes out of the firewall. And that area feels good. Let's try her again, make sure. Wum, 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 wum. It revs good, has good throttle response. I think I like it. Now Slick wants me to cut this and flip it to this side. He said he just hates these not being centered with this. But before we flip that too much, I think we do need to uh, line up our column. I'm not too worried about it. If we did favor it to this side of here though, uh, that would obviously make it easier to go from this to this because we wouldn't have that right there trying to catch that old sketcher. Oh, she's the eagle eye. I'm gonna give her a tap. Oh, that's perfect. Eh, maybe I tapped her too far. Oh, too much. I think that right there's the ticket. So I agree with not sticking too much hardware through here. I did nut cert down here, which you can see them, uh, but right here and right here, I don't wanna add no more. If we don't have to, 
that area is a little easier to see. So we're gonna kill two birds with one stone here. We're gonna build a way to mount that gas pedal, but also that's gonna actually take it off the firewall just a hair more, which will actually make the stroke of the pedal further because it can pivot a little more before it hits the tow board. More throttle, baby. <laughs> so I am just gonna outline that where I know where to put it. Tracer out, folks. Next thing we wanna do is get us a little bit thicker metal. Something thick enough that you could drill and tap. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's thick enough. I was actually hoping for something about three eighths. About like so. Yep, we can make this work right here. Yeah. First up, a little flap attack to clean the metal. Thing's lucky I only hit it at quarter power. If I would've hit that thing full power, sheared it clean in half. We'll kind of aim for somewhere in there. Get you a good straight edge. Do not side load your blade like that. It's not very smart. Do as I say, not as I do. I kind of roughed us out here. Remark it. We're gonna let that grizzly eight. Take her off of that. That looks real good. Cleaned up all of her sides where the pattern's all the same way. Question is, is she matching? Pretty dang close. Just gotta take a little kissy off right there. Careful, a dab will do ya. It's beautiful. Sorry, sir, we are not taking outside jobs at this moment. You're not. I bet you are today. <laughs> Don't I have a choice? Nope. Mark out our bottom side there. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kind of rough cut it. Then we'll probably have to mark it again, then clean it up on the belt sander again. What do you think about that? I like that forward. She looking good? That looks great. Oh, oh man, I love that transmission cover, that hump. Well, if you can't see it, turn your light on there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I forgot that zipper. <laughs> She gonna work now? Yep. All right. I wrote you an invoice already for your <laughs> boss. Looks like we're at 10,923 buckaroos. Yeah. I wrote invoice more than four. Hey, take that to your boss. <laughs> I will. I'll get you a get out of jail free card. How's that? Yeah, that's a pretty good trade. Yeah, pretty good trade. Huh? <laughs> but give dad a hard time. Uh, the only time I see him is when he needs something. <laughs> he really took that uh, invoice for his boss too. Uh, that was some, some lock thing and it had all that thick coating on it. He's just got a little crappy wire welder at work, so they needed someone who could weld it. Mark them out. We're gonna drill us a couple holes. Uh, I probably should have counted for what bolts we're gonna put in here where we drill the proper size. But we done did one side, so we're too far gone. Yeah, she may work. Now when you drill and tap stuff, you got a proper size hole you're supposed to drill per whatever tap you're gonna use. We're gonna go with the 10, 30 seconds, just cause I have it, and I kinda like the little bit bigger size. These don't fit through there. We'll drill that out and end up making it work. Uh, for now, I'm worried about getting this uh, drilled and tapped. And I looked it up. I do not have the proper size that we need. That's too small. And I'm afraid this one's gonna end up being too big. Sometimes you gotta risk it for the biscuit. And that may still be too small.
little tapping fluid. Well, she seems to be going, so it may be just right. Well, she was going until she wasn't. Now there we go, back her out of here. Slow and steady. Whoop, I can feel her coming out the back side a little bit. We have protrusion. Oh yeah, knock out our uh, next one. Just the same, smooth as butter. But, but, butter. Butter. And once you do that, boom. We're ready for them screws. Step our holes out just a hair. Both of them start. Beautiful, guys. Looking great. Almost looks like damn Jimmy Warner did it himself. Old pudding pops. That wire wheel does a good job of making those edges just not so sharp. It won't really round it. Just knocks a little bit of the point off. Uh, really happy with how that's looking right there. Got her in place there, all lined up. One tack, and then we want to check it. Wanna look from up here before we lock it in. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Tweaked her just a hair. I like that. And that's permanent now. Woo hoo, baby. We'll weld her on each side, just that one inch. The top I'm not worried about. Now we got our pedal in place, removable. And over here, well, you can see where we welded it, but we can uh, sand that out. And of course our one hole, we'll weld it up and smooth all that out. She'll end up pretty. About right in here as far as where we're gonna come through. Uh, and I think we'll come through down here. That's about perfect spot for any carburetor setup. So we're sitting good there. Uh, we need to get us a Heim joint probably to then build our little adjustable uh, throttle linkage rod. I don't have one that bolt holes at 10 30 seconds. So later we may uh, run over to the hardware in Shawnee. I need to get some Allen head uh, screws for this too. But that's something we can also order online if we have to. Uh, I want to concentrate on getting a little more work done. So up next, next let's look at our uh, steering and what we got for it. What we have here is a raw, no paint, no chrome, no shiny, nothing. Just raw metal. Very basic, bare bone steering column from, I think it's called Limeworks. Now me being new to building hot rods, I just asked Derek from the Bowling Brothers what's usually their go-to kind of setup. This is what they go with. Now you can go with some much more traditional old hot rod options. Take the time to search one of them down and then go through it, fix it, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm not that worried about it. I'm not that traditional of a guy. Uh, I'm traditionally in a hurry more than anything, like always. Uh, so this looks like pretty simple. It looks like it's got a bearing in each end of course we got our steering shaft that goes through the end splined a couple lock collars on that sucker to keep it into place this end is tapered and keyweighed for a uh, steering wheel of course so pretty pretty simple stuff uh, i guess this is their mount that should bolt up into the factory location of ours and then drop down the correct angle for their column it came with these, so I assume this is for this. All right. Should have brought a flathead. Should have brought a flathead. Should have knew that was tight. Oh, should have been a cowboy. Should have learned to rope and ride. Then I wouldn't be building these hot rods. Working away my life. I'm very confused here. Does that go like that? If it does, why would we need these big long screws? And if it does, why would we need these? Well, that is riveted to that, so we're not undoing that. Don't mind me, doing a little dumpster diving looking for uh, missing parts here. I found them. 
I was in there looking. I was like, boy, none of this is matching up. Whoop! Oh! Test them old knees out, why don't we? I found what we needed. Uh-huh. I'm assuming we use that factory cap to mount that, but uh, that is bigger than our column is. So I don't know what is going on here. But just mount her in place and silicone it. Next up, we're gonna get her mounted here. Looks good to me. This old custom Pike County tilt, baby. <laughs> You just get done driving her, pick her up, tilt her forward. Thought I was building a damn bolt together street rod here. What's going on? <laughs> I'm texting with Derek from the Bowling Brothers. And I said, is there supposed to be another bushing in here? He said, we use a strip of eighth inch thick rubber. I said, do you get that at your local rubber strip store? <laughs> yeah, she needs about an eighth inch all the way around. I got cardboard, damn it. He said he gets his online. Well, I don't have online here. Uh, but I do have a little mud flap that I ain't scared to cut up. She's about quarter inch thick, but then here in the recessed area, she's a little thinner. And that gives us a nice line to follow. Shoo! It's a pretty clean cut if you ask me. She don't need to be very wide, apparently. Just like I grew up, just a damned old single wide. We don't need no double wide here. Try to hold that there. Hopefully not slice our thumb off. This is a job for the fancy table. Lock that straight edge down. Yeah. And it's working. Of course, if you had the ability to uh, turn metal, if you had your lathe or something, if we were desperate, we could maybe find the right piece of uh, pipe to put in there to make a bushing. I'm sure there's someone out there creative enough to 3D print them one or something. But for us, these uh, mud flaps, I get them from the local parts store. I just have O'Reilly's bring me one occasionally. I've had that one for about five years. It just sits there, still good, nice, soft rubber. And when you need a piece of rubber, you'll be happy you have that thing. You're definitely at the, it ain't stupid if it works part of the show. Derek said, I'll see if I can find the part number and send it to you. I sent him a picture of a mud flap, so don't worry, I got this. Let me give her my best hoorah. It'll work or it won't. Now it's, if it fits, it's gonna be tight. It's gonna snug it up, I guarantee it. Oh. Well, let me wiggle this in here. I can't get it, so I'm gonna lubricate it. Mmm, now she smells good, because I just hit her with some sweet patina patina sauce, and that's oil-based, so that should help her slide on in. The oil getting on the raw metal of our column should really help the paint stick to it when we go to paint it as well. Yeah. Tighten her down. Now that sucker's pretty tight. I could've got that a little more flush, but that's good enough. Cause we're kind of just trying to figure out how we're going to have to cut the firewall. So that positioned where I think we kind of need to be. Uh, I think I'm just going to lay my marker on there. <laughs> Dang! Pull that column out of there. Uh, that's a pretty good mark right there. Pretty consistent actually. Ain't going to lie. Kind of surprised me. Put a tack on either side of that. That's gonna offer us a little support when we start drilling, cutting, uh, doing our thing. All that hard work we did, here we go. Looks like a puzzled alien with one eye bigger than the other. The next old cricket blade ain't gonna get her dead. I'm gonna replace that with another cheap blade that's sure to bend just like the last one. Be a lot easier with that pedal out of her way. Oh, don't bend on me now. Hey, 
Hey, I need that blade back. One, multiply it by 12, divider by seven. About four more blades, we'll get this out. Reload. Yo, oh, getting off course a little bit there. We don't want to do that. Ding pedal. Here's how you cut your thumb off. Close enough for me. That ain't shabby there. But it not make sense to have that column free floating with your rubber bushing, tighten it up and however that held that in there straight to then mark your firewall and cut it through. Made sense in my head. The only problem is you come around here and uh, yeah, that's one drop down uh, in that. That could even work like that. That would actually need to be picked up. Well, and y'all can see what the issue is gonna be. That has to be dropped down like quite a bit. This is a joint I had left over from the wagon. This is the one that came with all this stuff. Uh, and that is not going on there for some reason. I'd like it to because this one's a hell of a lot nicer looking than this thingy. That one went on down on our steering box. So unfortunately, I think we're going to have to drop that, which is going to leave a big old hole up here to then shave, which is pretty counterproductive to what we're trying to accomplish. I'm trying to make the firewall look good, and I just cut out a big old curvaceous piece. That's not going to be fun to patch. Here we go round two. Cut out more of your floor. As you do that, because everything's going so well, then your tool can break. That's what we wanted. Now, because things are going so well right now, we definitely want to try to force this. Yeah, I don't know why that don't go on there. Just because it's my lucky day, I reckon. All right. Got our half mounted in there. Trying to use our microfiber to hold us up a hair there. We would have more room if this one would fit. It's a lot more uh, slim and slender. Kind of looking at our steering shaft, how's that gonna go? I think we need to mock up an exhaust manifold. Obviously that's gonna kind of be in our way there as well. Luckily for us, right over here underneath the blank invoices, we got a manifold. So, that give us an idea. I mean, that's gonna clear, but then our exhaust is gonna have absolutely nowhere to go. Mm. I'm about to just roll her out in the junkyard and call it a day. After a little pondering of life here, mocked up our steering wheel on here, and that just looks a little high. The only way to get that down is to be able to take it that away some. The only way to be able to take it that away is to cut more of the floor where it can drop down and then go that away. Because if it's gonna come through more, we gotta be able to clear all this. So I think I'm gonna trim out just a hair more. We can't really take much more off than that. Guys, with hot rods, <clears throat> with vehicle building in general, proportions are very important. Uh, some people think with a Model A, you see an old hot rod, you think, oh, just chop the dog shit out of it. Take 17 inches right out the middle. Well, stuff's gotta be done in proportions. And I know it seems goofy to be very worried about the proportions of your steering column, but we gotta get that thing where we really want it. If it's sticking too high up in there, it's gonna look funny. Uh, you can't go too far down, I don't think. I think I found the sweet spot after that 19th trim. However, we gotta make sure we're gonna be able to steer. And that big lumpy joint I got is uh got me concerned so i'm hoping we can get this one on there so i'm hoping if i clean these teeth up a little bit that maybe that's all that's keeping it from popping on there maybe she just got some bad machine work some of them kind of look flat and i'm hoping that may have done the trick there clean them threads with some insta clean or splines so i meant high performance spot spline cleaner that's all huffing room. All right, be good to me, baby. 
I said, be good to me, baby. Well, it's kind of half wanting to try. My main concern is would that clear, and the answer is yes. If it would slide on there, it would. That means we can get another one, or we may clean on that one some more. It kind of acted like it started to go on. All I want to do now is lock in where we're going to mount this. So that's going to get about a two-fold of cardboard there. That's to set our gap. Mud flaps and zip ties. Must be a hot rod being built in Pike County. Zip tie that down because that's the way we need it facing. That'll clear. Maybe. Well, if that was slid up, that's going to be close. Damn it. Oh! 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 Yeah, I got them carpenters on. Boom! Mm -mm 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 She's on. And by golly, we could use a win right now. <laughs> she may never come back off, but she's on. Oh, Ruba, could bring me my fancy water. How <sighs> she moved, or the collar moved. Man, that was just one tight fit mama. I did not think that was going to come off there, by the way. I'm trying to work her on and off a couple times where maybe we can get it to slip fit. Slap the old column back in, happy with where it's at. And if we come around here, I think we're going to clear. I know that looks really close. This is supposed to be pulled this way some, though. So I'm going to try to get us a measurement here to figure out how long to cut our DD shaft. I think eight and three quarters is going to be the sweet spot. Next, uh, after you cut it, you want to bevel the edge and then polish your shaft there. I'm trying to line these up where maybe we get a somewhat straight steering wheel, but we're not overly concerned about that right now. We're far from the need of a proper alignment. What the need is all this to slide together. There we go. Just tighten these by hand. I like where this is at. I think we'll clear as long as I pull this this away when we mount. Now, as far as building exhaust, uh, I can't get away with doing much more than what I've done right here, so hopefully that'll clear. She's going to be tight, but we'll figure something out. Zip ties. Get your zip ties. Pull that, that away. And I ain't going to lie to you, I did grind out this way probably about 3 16 of an inch where it's pulling it that away. We don't want our steering wheel to look crooked, but it does not. About six and three quarter, and about six and three quarter. And pulling that that away, uh, look, now I can get my whole hand around that, which makes me feel a lot better. Last thing we want to be doing is driving and have our motor somehow get up against that, and we lose steering. Or it's turned one way, and that becomes our permanent steering. So out here, it's going to be hard to build a mount because we're in all the curve and whoop de doo on the firewall. So let's look at the inside. Inside, I was thinking across here, if we could just put our u-bolt mount up in here i wouldn't be mad at that maybe if we could mount it there uh, we do got to worry about getting into our brake there so that may not work for us of course we're gonna have to put a tiny brake pedal on that and or flip it i don't know what we're doing guys throw in the towel that's it i quit 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 three times because i kicked it in the air I just did all that for it to just fall out of there. Perfect. Whew. It's not what I was trying to do. Well, it is. Put us a small piece back in. I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to try bending this. Line her up there in the press brake. Yeah. Hey, there's a handle. Bent her a little bit. Had to bend her just a hair more. It's looking like it could possibly sort of work. 
Except then if it pulls it up, it's gonna be pulling it into an angle. If we would have left it straight and got it back where it needed, we couldn't have got the nuts on. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Toss that damned old U-bolt in the trash. I got a new idea. We're gonna keep her simple. Quit overcomplicating this. Ruber, fancy water, damn it. All right, our column there is a inch and three quarter. That represents that. Just kind of eyeballing here. I think we can cut a flat tab, drill a couple holes, bolt that to the toe board. It butts against the dang column. We tack tack it and it got to come out towards the inside. Ain't got to go through the firewall. We should be able to just keep her simple. something about like so or we can weld it and then just do something about like that or find this a little better version this time i centered us a bolt there a little quarter 20 and i circled it and then i matched the radius around those where it kind of flows and goes baby something about 11 gauge or so would be perfect for this do our damned old quarter inch whatever that is would be good we'll use that Oh, it's go time. I had enough uh, pressure on that that as I cut through that, Oh, she collapsed, and when she collapsed, she pinched that blade, and when it pinched that blade, luckily, nobody got hurt. Well, only me here, but very dangerous to do there. I didn't think I had her squeeze that tight. Dang! Apparently that wedged that on there good, too. Yeah. Had to put some stank on that one to get it off there. All right, try to be a little safer. Uh, I think having one glove on definitely saved me there. Right there's our finished little piece. She's pretty. Position her where you want, and then that's gonna go up on that side. And I'm gonna tack it once I get squared up. Mainly eyeballing it to make sure our edge that runs like that is gonna be nice and straight. I think I just welded cardboard. <laughs> I didn't weld the greatest. I don't know what the deal is there. Now let's see if uh, this will weld up top. Much better. Yeah, that cardboard was getting us. <clears throat> Next, I'm gonna put that back, and I'm gonna shove it over this way about an eighth inch, then up about an eighth inch, and then we'll mark these out. Ah, oh, crap. Crap, crap, crap. Stupid horn button thing. I meant to index that first. That's why they call me Redo Ricky. You don't get it right the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth time. We'll keep redoing it till we do, by God. Clock that baby so that's straight up and down. We went for a full commit and welded that on. Now once we drill them holes and bolt that like that, uh, it'll position it. It'll hold it. Two bolts, it'll keep it from rolling. Up top, that clamp ain't no punk. Uh, I think we're gonna be good, finally. Snip. About right there. Drill her two holes. I am not gonna lie, I will definitely nut cert that. Uh, I know I'm trying to keep crap off the firewall, but my tolerance level's pretty low right now. And yeah, it's gonna be down there on the bottom, kind of at an angle. She won't look too bad there. Now I have one nut cert left from yesterday. Hoping we can find one more in this toolbox. I, I'm about out though. I dug through yesterday and got all I could get from it. Got a lot of them that are just too big. Oh, 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 my, my, oh my, oh my. What do we have? Oh yeah, two will do. I thought we were gonna go thread that and it's gonna be metric. <laughs> get off, get off. Oh, don't lose it. 
Let's go nut surf this sucker. Step one, take her out to three eighths. Step two, simply thread on nut surf. Step three, give her the squeeze of death. Step four, an extra turn or two never hurt. Ugh. We're overachievers. Step five, repeat steps two through four or five. Ugh. I think this can go together for the last time. Slap her back together, just so we can see what she looks like with a steering wheel and a gas pedal in her, guys. I think that's gonna work out pretty good. Uh, it's very nice to see that in there. That did kind of whoop me today. I don't think it should have took me that long, but that's how it goes sometimes, guys. In the end, we've got steering hooked up. Uh, we can wrap our hand right there, and the Bowling Brothers have one exactly like this. Uh, he FaceTimed me, and he could get just a hand around there. Our measurements say we're pretty close to each other. Just in case this will help one of y'all from that lip over there, that flange to the center of my column, uh, probably about six and three quarter. And then height wise, we'll go from this bottom flange on the side over eyeballing it roughly, probably about six and a half, maybe six and five eighths. So come up that, go over that, and that's where you should be aiming for center to punch you a hole. Just in case you do something similar to me, then you're not, you know, firing from the hip, shooting in the dark like I was, because I just had to cut a big old hole in our pretty work there. Uh, now, it is about 445, which is early to call it a day. However, the Heim joints and stuff I need are at a hardware store 15, 20 minutes away, and they close at 530. So I think if I haul butt, uh, we can get there and get what we need before they close on us. Since we need to get somewhere fast, I know just the truck for the job. Woo! I'll get you there in a jiffy, baby. Good morning. Start with a little re-index. That baby's blind. Pull that screw. You can adjust that. Super cool. Pretty neat. Too big. So besides that, let me show you what I found yesterday, which is this little thingy majigger. That's kind of a little ball pivot threaded side there. Got us a 10, 30 seconds thread on that. A little serrated nut. You should be able to put that sucker right there like that. And then of course, tighten that down. That's what we need. Now as far as the rod goes, I wanted something 3 16 So all they had was some brass, which brass and old hot rods just go together anyhow. That's very close to fitting that. Uh, I'm gonna see if we can somehow uh, thread this. Does 3 16 happen to be the perfect size to then thread to 10, 30 seconds? I don't know. Sure seems like it's trying to go. Come on, baby. Be good to me. Oh, she's trying. Custom throttle linkages is one of the many things we hand fabricate here. I put us hot rods and more. Looks threaded to me. Next, I run my jam nut down. Then we run down our little pivot thingy. Uh, boop, just run down our jam nut, and that looks almost professional. Gas pedal is back in, and I'd move that to the top. Just kind of eagle eyeing it out here uh, on the top one. It's going to come out closer up here and over this way, which I think is going to be easier to run linkage to. The lower it goes, the more we're going to be closer to our intake. We also have a 700R4, which means we're gonna have TV cable brackets and stuff to worry about. So higher's better, I think. So mark that sucker out. About where I think that's gonna have to pass through. Eagle Eye says we drill a hole right in there. Whew. 
Whoa, use a little carbide to put a little indentation. Then we could do some drilling in that old curve situation. A mock up. I think something like that's gonna work. I'm gonna drill her out just a hair. It is rubbing as you can hear. Uh, we don't wanna have to listen to that as we're blowing Slick 50's doors off. Uh, putting the gas pedal to the floor in this thing. Whoop! <clears throat> Zip ties, mud flaps. We got, now we gotta get up the old duct tape. Got a piece of rubber mud flap up in there. This is just an experiment. I cut a strip and kind of slotted a hole in it. What I'm trying to do is figure out how we can uh, grommet that. That'd be better if it was uh, centered up better. So I'm gonna kick up a game plan on this. Guys, I don't want a big old half inch hole that water or probably not too much water, but just everything can come through. Heat, exhaust, whatever. I'm trying to seal up these floors. We worked too hard on them to just put a bunch of big old gaping holes in them now. Oh, perfect. Dead center. Very professional. Huh? New idea here. Sleeve from a sway bar end link. It's just what I had. We're gonna tape that to kind of help hold that center. There you go, I like that. A shiver on through. And what I'm hoping is we'll full weld that out here. We'll cut off the extra tubing where that's just a smooth hole on the firewall. But that little, I don't know, three quarter inch or so we left hanging on the inside. I'm hoping we can take something like just a real good thick piece of vinyl, leather, hell, I don't know, little piece of rubber, thinner rubber or something. Put the tiniest slit in the back, cut it in the size of like a quarter, a circle. <laughs> put it over it. I don't even care if we put a little zip tie, safety wire or something just to retain it on that tube with a tiny slit on the back side. It probably won't be perfect, but it's gonna be a lot bit better than just having a 9 16 half inch hole on the firewall. I think it'll work. Sit her with the redneck shine job. Next, we're gonna polish this to get it ready to weld in because this one, it's just too small, guys. I put that in there. It's rubbing the top and bottom. That hole just ain't big enough. So we're gonna step up a size here. Basically gonna be a repeat process. A tip number two. Will it work? Much better. We ain't got no binding. We're gonna call that a victory. Thank goodness, because I could use one about right now. This little tedious crap, it'll get you. So here's experimente number one. Piece of black vinyl, just zip tight on there, like I said. Not perfect, but better than a big gaping hole. Look what I found for experiment number two. It's got a little edge there, like it could be a uh, safety wired. It's just a plug, but guess what that uh, plug happens to pop on? Very tight and nice. Oh, I don't know, that piece of pipe we used? I don't know, like maybe it's meant to be? So I'm gonna cut us a tiny slit in this and then get it on there. Too good to be true. Dang it, it's too thin, it ripped out. The squeak in your hair is actually the gas pedal. We need to lube that thing up. But guys, you get the idea. We have options here. In fact, I think if we'd find a big rubber cap to like cap a 5 8 barb and put that on there, that being the thicker rubber, we can cut a slit in it, uh, slap a little grease on the backside, and I bet that right there would keep it super happy, pretty sealed up. Now, let me say, uh, I do know we can rig up some type of throttle cable and then we wouldn't have to worry about a seal. Uh, but to get that throttle cable where it needed to be and matching with our pedal, I guess we could cut and modify the pedal. Yeah, 
We're just gonna run what we got, guys. I'm sure we can figure out a seal to work there. It crossed my mind before someone says that's what I should have done. Next up, we're gonna work on getting our brakes sealed up. To do that, I want the pedal to drop more. Verified with the Bullen Brothers that I could cut some of these threads off and I wasn't gonna lose too much stroke for the brakes. So we need to just give her a quick little trim job here. Leave that jam nut on there. That way you can uh, run that off there to clean that thread up. Little pro tip for you there. Cut a lot of thread in my day. All right, let me go slap this all back together. Mistakes have been made. First time setting up hot rod pedals and stuff, guys. She's a little tricky, especially when you're flying blind. After cutting that th threaded rod, that sinks down where now we don't need this big old blister. And talking to the Bowling Brothers, they said, make sure you leave a big enough opening where if you ever got to remove this pedal, you can get this through there. They recommend keeping a pretty large square and then building a plate that goes over that that's removable. That way you can remove it off of that. Uh, either way, I think we're ahead just to cut out this blister and put a piece of flat metal back in. And that, my friends, is why they call me backtracking Bobby. So we're gonna cut her down here at the flange. And something like that. And over here, the same thing. Let's go backwards. Sometimes going backwards, going forwards though. Eventually, if you wanna get forwards, you gotta take that step back to do her how it needs did. And I also forgot to mention this thing, I think I wanna cut it and flip it, where instead of that being up there high, it brings it more in line with our column. It's gonna drop it a little lower here. So we probably wanna slice that first. Then we'll kind of roughly shove that down. That way I can give me some rough marks on where we need our square to be. When we go to cut out our new panel over there. Ha ha! Nice thick metal, so we want to bevel that before we weld it. Oh, she's glowing hot. She's hotter than a two-pecker tomcat. Kind of build that up where I can uh, grind it, make it just look like one piece again. Oh, pretty. Little guesstimation going on here. Little guesstimation on where to drill these as well. Put some teeth on it. That tacked up, figuring out a template for a cover plate. 
I'm gonna figure this out, do da, do da. I'm gonna figure this out, even if it takes all damn day. She's pretty. Now, here's the main reason I wanted to go with this. Uh, you can say that's, that's gonna look good. Obviously, we'll have some smoothing out to do here as far as where we welded stuff back in. But if we had more rev nuts or nut certs, whatever you call them, we could uh, put some of those there, four bolts. That now, we don't have the crazy big opening. That's a bonus. Another bonus is we can actually get our pedal in and out uh, where before we couldn't have come to find out. I didn't even think about that. And then big bonus here is now we really don't have to worry about how we do our grommet. Hear me out because that piece is removable. So if we want to take that little piece off, we can still bodywork, paint, do whatever we're going to do on the tow board side of things. And then if we need to add to that little filler plate, Weld on some brackets, then add some bristles, rubber, you know, whatever's gonna be our, our grommet, so to speak, grommet, so to speak. Uh, we can do that later down the road. As long as we always build up off this plate, it's removable. And if we mess it up, it's easy to remake that. We don't have to uh, like cut out a piece of our tow board. So that right there is gonna be uh, just, it's gonna help us in so many ways. Happy with how that little plate looks there too. Now, as far as ground bedding this, I'm not too worried about the column. Y'all have seen me use that little kind of cork tape, AC tape, whatever you call it. And I ain't afraid to shove a little bit around that around there in that little gap. That wouldn't hurt my feelings one bit. So for now, as far as all of our progress is being made, I think I'm happy with where everything's at. I do notice this looks more straight up and down, being flipped down. We maybe should have kicked that at a, put a little angle into it. The good thing is the pedal's now removable. So if we need to do that in the future, we'll, we'll add a little angle there. All right, guys, I think we are finally ready to move forward. Good golly, Miss Molly was at some work. We're about this stinking close to wanting to pull that body off there. Uh, one thing we also need to figure out is our battery. Now the battery I briefly talked about and I was scared to put underneath the passenger floor pan because of our exhaust everything being tight and i started doing some research and slick sent me this battery right here the old dynabat 12 volts of fury it must be because people are running these tiny little cute adorable batteries all kinds of stuff and i read about them they seem to have really good reviews as you can tell it's quite small which helps us out in our situation what makes me nervous about this well the fact that it's not a normal sized battery and if we're out austin texas let's say i could drive it this year and our battery dies we're having trouble well you can't just replace it with another one so that's kind of scary that's a concern <laughs> that was me acting like i was pushing my car around all them texas crazy drivers down there on the side of the road pushing uh so anyhow we're gonna try this sucker uh, it, you can buy their holder that comes with it. Their holder's built out of nice thick material, which I like. Most people try to do it out of the thinnest stuff they can. This thing's actually built quite well. So I got to thinking, where could we put it? My initial plan when deciding to go with this small little guy was throw it off the frame rail. There's gonna be a brace here. I was thinking maybe we could make something like that there work. Now again, we ever lose our battery, get jumper cables on that or something, especially with that running board being on there is gonna be a pain. Uh, long story short, guys, 
I was standing here yesterday and I happened to look right there and I noticed how big of a gap was underneath that old passenger uh, seat. Hey Puddin, how big of a gap is it? Well, you really wanna know? Uh, I'd say it's big enough for a Dynabat battery to fit right underneath. Now the corner of that does hit our bottom cloth a bit, but it don't actually hit the seat, as in my butt cannot feel that bracket. Now, there's a huge benefit to putting that there. Main benefit is if I ever wanna rig up an airbag underneath there, uh, so if somebody pisses me off, I can just hit the ejecto seto switch and poof, shoot them through the canvas top. We've got power right there. The second big uh, plus is if for whatever reason this battery goes down, uh, we can simply flip that up right there and get to our post. Whether that means jump, putting some jumper cables on it and or we could probably rig up some little adapter cables to keep with us where if we use eyelets or whatever we use to connect to this, we could connect those and run them to like the back seat floor and set a regular old car battery from the, the parts house in there. If any of that made sense, I don't know. All it really means is we got to figure out exactly where we want that battery. And yes, these things are safe to mount on their side. You know the irony in all this, uh, I thought the battery was gonna be the hardest thing we had to do. And then it turns into literally the easiest thing we've had to do. And all the easy stuff I thought we had to do turned out not to be so dang easy. I'm just gonna kind of eagle eye that where it's running straight with our bead. Then I'm gonna take that forward right there. The further I can take it that away, the least chance of ever seeing it from this side when the door is open. Uh, I kind of like her. Kind of like it right there. Quite conveniently, it fits within our uh, bead rolled panel as well. Now, as far as our leads go, we can either do one this way and down, one this way and down. There's Allen's on there, so I'm assuming those thread on and off. We may just put eyelets on there or something. Uh, I don't know, we'll figure it out. We can punch them holes at a later date. I ain't scared about that. Kapow! Kaplooey! Bink! floors. Ow! 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 How could you do that to me? That thing fought back. I was gonna say, how could you do that to me? A piece of metal burnt into my skin. It stuck there. It was not going away. <sighs> oh, spit. Come with me, friends. And if I seem in a better mood now, it's because that tow board area is done. Kinda. Sorta. Not really. Three eighths is too big. Five sixteenths is too small. Damn metrics. I am gonna see if we've got the stuff to do a five sixteenths nut cert. I ain't got my glasses on, get them old crazy eyes. Damn old crazy eye McGee. Perfect. There's two, three, and four. Y'all need a good old pipe wrench? I got one for you right here. Size hole we need here, seven, six, tanks. Nut cert tools, they got different tooling, so I had to do a little swapping out there to get a setup for these five, six, tanks. Guys, as cheap as a, like one of these tools with the tooling and some of the basic stuff is on like the Amazon, uh, I've used the fire out of mine since having it. I used to be one of those guys that would, uh, Tightened up some nuts and bolts here and crawled underneath it and put a couple tacks on it or something, you know, but this is way easier. And you ever strip this out for whatever reason, uh, you can take a drill bit, drill that sucker out, pop a new one in it. Danger, do not mount on its side. Looks good, 
super easy easiest thing we've done all dang week and that looks slicker than dog slobber it's gone Ta -da. now seeing how our cables are going to have to run underneath the floor and over towards the frame rail uh, i'm not going to punch those holes because we're going to have exhaust going through there i would rather run the cables knowing where the other crap is first so for now we're going to take that as a victory all right let's break it down What takes a long time is making the stuff where it's removable and good to go. It's always easy to just set something into place and like weld it or something, but that don't mean you can work on it then. You spend the time to make the crap all removable, and when you finally get done, everything goes together nice and easy. Yeah, can of sweet papa. Freeze, mother liquor. We're cooking with grease now. Now, when you actually spend the time to make stuff removable, uh, it is gonna make your life easier in the long run. I know sometimes it's hard. You do something, it's like, well, I could just weld that, and I'll probably ne ne never need to mess with it again. But guys, you're asking for trouble, especially on something you want to keep nice, nice paint. You don't ever want to have to cut something out or uh, redo it down the road. This car, we've been making a lot of stuff removable. I am. It shows, because in about five minutes just now, if even five minutes, of course, none of the stuff was full tanked down or whatever, but we just broke down the steering, the brake assembly, the column, the shifter, the gas pedal. And with that impact right there, if I wanted to pull them floors another 30 seconds, then they'd be out too. Seats are gone, battery's gone. Uh, we are sitting pretty. The floors are removable, but to weld up all this, I'm actually gonna leave them in there. That way, hopefully it helps just mm, squeeze everything and hold it right where it needs to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feeling strong. Got her jigged up just like always or all the other times. Luckily down in this mount down here, there's an angle brace, good place to hook to. We didn't get into any of that with our sheet meddling, so we got a good hooking point still. Hey Ma, put us out there just a uh, hooking it. <coughs> Gotta pay that rent, damn it. <coughs> if I was a bet man, I bet this would come off easier if we took the bolts out the body much better. Oh, I hate doing this. Makes me nervous. Three sketchy blocks later.
Careful. You don't believe that. I drilled a new hole on that, but my hole didn't line up. The original two holes on this stand that I originally built for the shoe box forward uh, just mounted up on these holes. Ah. Oh, and that was literally the perfect height. First time having her on the dolly all the way. It's gonna let us get this out the way and set it down. And we're about to have 14 miles of welding to do. All right, here it go. And on our firewalk especially, we wanna go nice and slow. We don't wanna warp this up real bad. Slow and steady will win this long race. For this nice fresh 18 gauge was it butted up real tight. I cranked our heat up where it could burn a little better than where we're working a gap. And then over here, where we had cut this, this panel's sucking in a little bit, or this one's pushing out a little bit. I'm gonna still try my best to match her up here, right there. Much better. Puddin's jump a gap service is gonna go around here and place a tack ever so often. I and mean, guys, I'm just gonna start tacking her up, welding her up, whatever. As I weld up here, some of those areas where we're overhanging, I'm grinding it down. I'm hitting her with the carbide where we can weld it. We're welding her out here. Now the lips right there. Had to grind them to our flat piece. There's a bottom in there. So grind that till it was touching. Zap, 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 zap. Hole, 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 hole. Shaver smooth. Uh, our Clico from our gas pedal, shaver smooth. Lop that baby off, full weld it up. We're, we're ready to grind that down. Now here we're doing pretty good. Uh, this is our next big concern. I traced us a circle two inches and then I cut a little extra and my eagle eye was pretty close because that's about perfect. So how's that going to translate into this? I don't know, but we're going to start by shaving this just flat across. Just like Kansas, nice and flat. Put some uh, tape together there. And then I'm going to put sticky side to sticky side and uh, tape that in place. This is a new technique. I've never done this before. I just figured if we did that, we can get inside and uh, trace that with our marker. All right. So, we'll go across there and just trace that baby. Fortunately, there's a little bit of shape in that, not much. We'll try our best to match it, but that area is going to definitely end up needing a little bit of body filler when we go to smooth her out for good. Using the English wheel here, where I marked them lines, I'm just trying to roll that edge a little bit. That way, hopefully, we can use as least body filler as possible. The camera probably can't even pick it up, but it is starting to just give her a little. 
I love old hot rods. I love old hot rods. I love old hot rods. That's a match. That should keep our body fillers to a minimum. Well, that at an angle, we'll try to trace that outside. It is a little oblong because it's coming through at an angle. Uh, I'm gonna put a couple tacks right there and build up that corner, then we'll cut that out. Feeling like a bad ass. Sorry, sorry guys. Hey, I got these things. I ain't never used them before until today. They're three quarter by three quarter. That's what the bottom says. Uh -huh. Good for 3000 RPMs. Also good for little kind of sunk in areas on a Model A firewall. That's it guys, I quit, I'm done. I've got no more in me. Firewall's pretty well ready for body work though. Morning, morning. Uh, I got out here nice and early this morning, uh, Saturday morning here to just finish up some welding. And I ain't got to any of it yet. That's because I've been staring at them beads on the firewall and they go down a straight line, but our firewall curves like that and it's been bugging me. Yesterday I said out loud, I've been eyeballing it, but I finally said it out loud. I told my buddy, I said, I ought to sweep those beads to match that. It sure looked better. So as soon as I walked in this morning and I looked over here, I just immediately knew it was a, it's what I was going to do. I didn't come out here with that plan, but here we are. I got one side done to figure out our progress, so let's get the other side. Just mark us out a square here to cut. On this one, I tried to go a little wider than I did on this one trying to avoid having to sand into the bead where hopefully I can reduce some future body work. This is the 17 piece firewall. Put us some marks down through there. Hit that with a roll lot and you just squeeze that baby together. Next we're going to check to see if we like it or not. Oh. Well I do like it. I think that was looking about perfect. And it's pretty good right there. Just looking at a measurement here and we're staying within a sixteenth of running with this curve with this. Weld her up, cool her off as you go. I didn't weld that all at once. And uh, that thing is rocking. Needs a little bit to it, but not a lot of bit. Our firewall has a little break in it right there. So after hammering in that down, now you can see we're actually sitting pretty flat. Tip of that needs to go down just a hair. Tap, tap, tap. Smooth that sucker out. It takes a minute, I'll, I'll warn you of that. Uh, got her kind of taped up here in place. Get her set where I want her there. Trace this baby out. We got some more cutting to do. Well, this thing will be getting more of that, I promise.
our piece here. We just work her into place. Weld it up, guys. We're matching pretty good. Well, we welded in a little bit, we need a patch. Well, we do that the same way we always do it. A little template, little cut out of metal. All we need now is a little more welding. Let's bring it home, baby. All right. Hey, yo. Uh, guys, that was, oh, y'all weren't even looking at me. That was a lot of work. Uh, I planned about four hours this morning, getting out here a little after six to be able to get done what I need to get done. And I just worked till 11 uh, on those two beads. But man, those flowing with that firewall swoop uh, sure look a lot better. And had I never changed that, uh, I plan on pretty well keeping this car forever. I don't think we'll ever get rid of this Model A. Uh, not in the next probably seven decades. So every time I popped the hood on that, I would have went, man, I wish I would have spent the day and done that. Uh, now today we only got half day. But this week, guys, we've got a lot done because what I got done in this video and last Monday's main channel video was all actually done this week, starting on Tuesday because Monday was my wife's surgery. Yeah, and for anyone uh, who asked or all the prayers and stuff I've seen all across the comments, everything went good on the surgery. And uh, hopefully that'll be, like I said, it could be life-changing for my wife, uh, her not having that heart issue anymore. So I want to thank you guys for being here. Uh, being patient as we continue to bang out the sheet metal work on this car and guys it's a lot and it's a lot to do it right and which that we didn't even really do that right just now just shh, pretend like you didn't see that uh, really the right way to do it was we could have stamped out a whole new bead and welded in a big panel and guys that would have took probably another couple days worth of work and i know we've been using some stuff like some of slick's equipment that most y'all probably don't have I know even some of my stuff, like an English wheel and bead roller, a lot of people don't have that. However, I want to show you if you're creative, you can still make some pretty trick looking stuff like those beads flow with that. And what do we use to do that? Cut off wheel and a welder. So that's it for this go around. We are pretty well tidied up on sheet metal. The little bit I've got to finish welding up ain't no big deal. Uh, as we make more progress on this, we're going to be to the point of like body working, uh, painting, we probably need to blow apart the chassis to get some paint on it. So we're kind of to the uphill, I guess, where now everything can maybe start going downhill. So I hate to dine and dash on you. The reason I'm trying to get out of here ASAP is uh, my grandma, well, my sister's going to take my grandma to the Tulip Festival thing. I don't know. I, grandma don't get out uh, a whole, whole lot. Usually if she does, it's to come see family. So the be able to go with her somewhere uh we are not gonna miss that opportunity today and uh, i just want to thank you guys for being here watching this uh, all the support at the puddingsfabshop.com uh you guys always just swamp us there and it's such a blessing to me and my family and all the families in oklahoma who produce the shirts and everyone else uh they um uh, they thank us for all the business we thank y'all for all the business uh so thank you guys i'm on the instagram i'm on the facebook I'm on the Patreon. I'm on a mission to get a shower. That's what I'm really on here. <laughs> so I'll see you guys next time. However, do not forget, sitting on your ass, finish your project.